Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss another concept of phenomena that is usually encountered in organic molecules and that is tautomerism. So this is our today's topic that we will be discussing in this video. So let's see what tautomerism means. Tautomerism is the reversible interconversion of isomers that involve a change in position of a hydrogen or any other atom or group. So what it means is that we have two isomers and they are interconvertible into each other just by the change in position of a hydrogen or any other small group. So what happens is that when this hydrogen or any other small group or a group of atoms or atom it changes its position one of the isomer is converted into another and at one point they are in equilibrium with each other so in fact they are two different species interconverting into each other because of shifting of a hydrogen or any other small atom now this is usually because uh, we are talking about the change in position of hydrogen it has to be accompanied by a change in position of a sigma or a pi bond so sigma bond is usually shifted from one position to another and as a result a pi bond will also change its position and these two isomers can equilibrate under appropriate conditions so if you provide them appropriate conditions uh, they will coexist in equilibrium with each other let's see the general mechanism of tautomerism uh, or how tautomerism actually happens under different conditions so before going into the mechanism let me tell you that this tautomerism is usually triggered either by an acid or a base so it can be an acid catalyzed mechanism or reaction or it could be a base catalyzed reaction so i have a general molecule here and we will see a general mechanism of tautomerism so we have this carbon chain with a double bond here and we have an atom x now x could be anything it could be um, oxygen nitrogen it could be anything and we have a base here because we're talking about the base catalyzed reaction so we have a base here and base you know has the property of abstracting a proton from any molecule so what uh, this base does is that it abstracts a proton from this molecule and as a result a negative charge is created here which is then shared between these two carbon atoms the electrons and that are left behind by this hydrogen are shared between these two carbon atoms and as a result this pi bond between this carbon and the atom x is shifted towards uh, x so what happens as a result is that now we have a carbon carbon double bond here and a single bond between carbon and x but now on x we have a negative charge so it's unstable and so it abstracts the proton from bh converting it again into B negative as uh, we had at the start of the reaction. So the base is uh, regenerated, it's a catalyst, it is, it is regenerated. And finally, we have a stable molecule like this. But one thing that you have to remember is that this negative charge in X is not accumulated here. In fact, it can resonate between X and this carbon. So this double bond, uh, sorry, this negative charge from X can be shared between CX and as a result, this double bond is shifted here. So we have a negative charge here, which is, can then resonate back and uh, between these two structures. Okay, so that brings a little uh, stability to this negative ion here. Now let's see an acid catalyzed mechanism. So we have the same molecule here. In an acid, you know, acid is a proton donor. So what uh, happens here is that this X uses its lone pair to abstract a proton from H, A, and as a result, is it is protonated and now has a positive 
charged on it and a negative is released the anion the conjugate base of the acid is released in the solution now this conjugate base because it has a negative charge is unstable so what it does is that it abstracts a proton from here shifting the ch bond towards these two, two carbon atoms forming a double bond here and as a result because we have a positive charge in x so it is uh, electron withdrawing uh, in nature now and it abstracts or it withdraws this pi electron density towards itself so the pi bond is shifted towards x and and we have a double bond here and h a is again released into the solution which of course is the uh, catalyst so again we have the same molecule as we saw in the previous base catalyzed reaction um, which means that the product is the same no matter what the mechanism is but of course the pathway to that product uh, is different when we have an acid or a base catalyst now we have uh, discussed resonance earlier and uh, we saw that we can uh, represent a molecule into different forms and here again we have uh, tautomerism so what is the main difference between tautomerism and resonance so the very first the basic difference is that tautomerism is the equilibrium between two isomers isomers means they are two different molecules and they differ only in the location of a double bond and a hydrogen all right and resonance is just the representation of a single molecule remember in resonance we do not have different molecules but it's a single molecule that is represented by more than one different structures and those structures differ from each other only in the position of the electrons no atoms change their positions but in fact in tautomerism a hydrogen atom may change its position secondly tautomerism is represented by this equilibrium arrow because it's an equilibrium between two different species so we use this arrow but for resonance because it's just a different representation of the same molecule we use this double-headed arrow in tautomerism the sigma bonding pattern may change during the process and as you saw that it's the shifting of a hydrogen atom from one position to another so of course the sigma bonding situation changes during tautomerism but in resonance the sigma bonding pattern is identical in all the resonance structures the sigma bond does not move or change its position it's only the pi electrons usually they are involved in resonance so the sigma bonds are not bothered uh, during re resonance happening uh, in a molecule right so these are some of the differences between tautomerism and resonance and now we'll discuss different types of tautomerism so as an example we have a very uh, well-known common keto enol tautomerism and it's of course the interconversion between a ketone and an enol ketone you know is a molecule having carbon oxygen double bond uh, having uh, this carbonyl group having alkyl groups on both sides and eno is from uh, two words or two phrases in from the double bond and ol from the oh or the alcohol so if we have a double bond and oh on adjacent positions so that is an eno let's see how it happens we have a ketone molecule here you can see the carbon oxygen double bond and alkyl groups on both sides and this ketone after shifting of hydrogen from one position to another is converted into enol and again this happens both uh, under acid catalysis or under base catalysis as well so a hydrogen from this ch3 here is shifted from this position to this oxygen and as a result we have a double bond and a single bond here in the enol form so this is the double bond en and oh makes it enol right uh, okay uh, before moving into the second example just look at the the arrows this arrow that is pointing towards the ketone is slightly longer than the one that is pointing towards the eno which means that the keto form in this form in this molecule is more stable as compared to the eno so 
the one that is more stable will have a longer arrow pointing towards itself. So in this case, we draw a longer arrow towards the keto form, which means that keto is more stable. Or in other words, this molecule will be happy to exist in the keto form more than the enol form, right? But it also depends upon the structure of the molecule. You might have certain structures in which the enol might be stable enough and here it is we have a phenol here so you can see the enol structural moiety here the carbon carbon double bond is here the oh is here and if you convert it into a keto it will look like this now in this case the enol form is more stable as compared to the keto form and this keto form can also exist in this form so uh, they are both equally stable so the arrows are equal of equal length but in this case enol is more stable because you can see that the lone pair on oxygen here in phenol can be involved in resonance and it's an extended resonance which makes it more stable second this molecule is aromatic right we have discussed aromaticity before so aromaticity brings more stability to the molecule and this phenol here is aromatic this keto form of the same phenol it is not aromatic so converting a phenol into this keto form is like going from a more stable situation to a less stable situation and that usually is not feasible and that is why it usually will come back and convert into enol and the molecule will most probably exist as a phenol rather than this keto form so it depends upon the structure of the molecule as well Then we have the nitroso oxime tautomerism, and of course, it's the conversion between an oxime and nitroso. Now, what does oxime or nitroso mean? If we have a carbon nitrogen double bond in a molecule and we have an OH group attached to the nitrogen, this forms an oxime functional group. Uh, some people call it oxime. We have a carbon nitrogen double bond, and this nitrogen has an OH group attached to it, so this forms the oxime functional group and this can be interconverted into a nitroso a nitroso group has a nitrogen oxygen double bond right so you, you can see the shifting of uh, hydrogen from this position here this uh, oxygen towards this carbon so you see a nitrogen oxygen double bond is formed here and a single bond is formed between this carbon and nitrogen and on this side, we have a carbon nitrogen double bond because we have a CH2 here and a nitrogen here. So we have a double bond here between carbon and nitrogen. In this case, this form is more stable. But if we do not have like hydrogens attached to this carbon here, then this form will most probably exist uh, in solution. So this here is one of the isomer and uh, this is the name of the second isomer here. Then we have the imine and enamine tautomerism. Again, it's of course the interconversion of imine and enamine. Imine is the when we have a carbon nitrogen double bond in a molecule uh, this functional group is known as amine and uh, we can have alkyl groups attached here or on this nitrogen as well but if we have like a carbon nitrogen double bond here this is known as amine enamine is again from uh, two phrases in for the double bond so we have a carbon carbon double bond here and amine is for the amine functional group amino functional group so we have this nh2 here which is uh, amine and uh, a combination of these two forms in amine so we have a double bond here and on adjacent position we have an amino group it's just like an enol okay so the interconversion of these two functional groups or isomers is known as amine and amine tautomerism now in this case uh, usually this form is more stable but if we do not have a uh, hydrogen attached to this nitrogen here in this case then of course uh, this form will be more stable right so usually the imine form is more stable and the molecule usually 
in this bore in this form so this is all about uh, tautomerism i hope understood and uh, uh, we'll discuss some more topics later on thank you so much